Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve. I'm here today with Michael. Hoy. <laughs> John. What's so funny, Christy? <laughs> Michael? Yeah, Michael. They kind of got me, too. You like Michael? <laughs> we'll call you Christy O. I, I, I don't sleep in a hyperbaric chamber. It must be the, the kryptonite balls. Right. <laughs> 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 right. Breathe Kev in, G. breathe out. On the other side of Christy's Kev G. And... <laughs> Dr. Brian. In the dark over there. <laughs> you are in the dark. Oh, he likes it. Oh, this is the And we need to move the light a little bit. Oh, uh, Mike. That one right you, there. Just did you mess up one. the light? Did I mess up the light? Yeah, okay. There we go. Right. Uh, don't worry about it. No, no, no. no, no, no. We can keep talking. We can keep talking. We'll, yeah, keep talking. we'll yeah. A little post okay, film processing can fix it, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. We had, a little, <laughs> we had a little snafu with the lighting situation a little bit ago. Okay. So. All right, fair enough. Where's Tesla when you need him? <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. uh, speaking of lighting, lighting. Uh, first of all, candles. The, John, what are you dr- um, Mike, what are you drinking? Kombucha. <laughs> oh, Mike. <so. laughs> um, beer. So apparently what they do is, mm. is that you get, yeah. like, you get fermented... Um, oh, we had a strawberry... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, try that. You get uh, fermented uh, grains, right? And then you put it in a bottle after X period of time. Can you do this in a case? Fermented grains, huh? Fermented, yeah. So you get grains. So you don't want to malt them first? <sighs> and well, yeah, you, you want them to sprout because you get the sugars going. Boil off, You get, off, you get some yeast coming in the air, and then, then you, you get your, you know, your simple beer. But, you know, over time, we've made this process to where it's really, really good, and they put it in a bottle and seal it, and I buy it. Yeah, so, yeah. Beer, they call it. Uh, but specifically, this brand is called Lagunitas Sucks, because Lagunitas is actually really good, but calling it Lagunitas Sucks is kind of ironic. Yeah. He's going to go on fire. What are you there? messing with, <laughs> Christy? He's going to go on fire. No, no, no. Don King's always good. No. Don't say, shh, shh Don King's not going to spontaneously light on fire. I guarantee <laughs> it. I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mike guarantees it. <laughs> yeah, so guaranteed. Yeah. That, that's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, under yeah. Hey, Mikey, I'll underwrite it. that. Yeah. So anyway, tonight we're talking about primitivism, specifically anarcho primitivism, not the, not the artist artistic form. Uh, and basically, what anarcho primitivism puts out is that it government isn't just the problem but the root the really the root of government and therefore the root of all human problems is what they call domestication of humans through uh, starting with agriculture and carrying on through more modern forms of technology and they propose a return to wild man essentially yes call it rewilding and they they want to return to a hunter gatherer state for human beings and I think if things collapse that'll happen really easy I mean we'll just go into that it was yeah, for a short period of time, maybe. But yeah. you think you could just be thrown out into the wild and be okay? I could, yeah. I would die within like, hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I see, like uh, I, me, I'd probably be. It would be that Simpsons episode where Lisa's eating moss off a rock. Oh, like, um, I guess there's some moss on this rock. It might sustain me for a couple of days. <laughs> Mike's like, Mike's like, we're going to have to resort to cannibalism. <laughs> like, Mike, it's only been an hour. <laughs> we're doomed. That's, that's after the peyote and the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it tastes pretty good, though. I mean, the, the thought. I mean, well, really no, I mean, like if we get into that situation, if I eat some funny mushrooms, I'll be like, what else are we going to do? Yeah. Anybody else had plans today? I mean, uh, <laughs> Who sold us that bill of goods at humans don't taste good you know really mm. like I, I don't believe anybody i've ever heard anybody say humans don't taste good well you, cannibalism come on Cannibal- so, can- people's like, problems with cannibalism is not the taste what is from it? my understanding oh really <laughs> <laughs> it's not the taste christy it's the morality of it. yeah, but not the best thing to do to eat the long pig you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> I what? bet you people started taking uh, it, though. There was, they a, might there was a priest in, more more. Uh, during the, the, the play period, right? <laughs> in, 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 uh, I don't know if it was, it was either France or Germany, but <laughs> play period, <laughs> Europe, right? Uh, totally off topic, but we'll get back. Um, so there was a uh, priest, medieval period, resorted to cannibalism during the plague, lack of food, whatever. So much, such a large portion of the population of that town had died, you know, there was, you know, couldn't even get food. So he, uh, he survived. And the story goes is that he locked himself in a chapel. He had the plague and said, you know, I'm going to lock myself in here. Or I'm going to, you know, I want to, you know, have my solitude before I died. And he locked himself in the chapel. And the only food that they could find was, and sadly, people who had already died. So he uh, he resorted to cannibalism, and he said that it tastes like pork. Yeah, yeah, it tastes like pork. Yeah. And yeah. thus, homeopathy was born. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, but uh, how does that relate to primitivism? I suppose that's a really bad scene if there's a plague with you know <laughs> in a primitive society is that you you know so many people of your tribe were not alone and you end up having to think about eating long pig. Uh, but um, that's what we're called long, long pig. Long pig. Long that, that's <laughs> that's kind of a, uh, something you know, a euphemism for human meat. Yeah. Long pig. Long pig. But um, okay, so I guess I'm the one who gets to say like primitivism isn't such a bad idea. Uh, so you've well, got. Well, do you believe that? It's not. Th no, it's not the worst idea. But there's a, there's a matter of degrees to it. Idea. Okay, there's a matter of degrees <laughs> to it. Okay, so it's like all right, so. My beard this morning, I realized, was getting a little bit long, so I trimmed it, all right? And it was funny, because we, you know, we were talking about what the topic is today is going to be, so, you know, I uh, got the trimmer, <laughs> three seconds, done, right? And I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, well, so if I don't have this thing, in three seconds, what am I going to do? <laughs> well, is it, do I get scissors then, and then cut it? And, uh, okay, that's, that's a little is bit that more. Is that still primitive that's a little, to have well, scissors? Okay, this is ah, what I'm saying. Okay. Is that primitive to be like, okay, there's no electricity, tools, I've got scissors, and tools, I cut, cut, so. cut, cut, cut. Or... Do I have, or how primitive are we getting? I have to find a nice sharp obsidian rock and sit there and be like, fuck, 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, but wait, wait a know? second, wait uh, a second. We already have shit, all right? Are we going to throw that all away or are we just going to use the stuff we have and just, you know, not create new stuff? It's not going to last very long. You know, the I sharp. The, the no, no, the oh. scissors maybe, but. Scissors, you can uh, rock. Even you those can, will get dull. Can, yeah, but you, yeah. Can, you can make them sharp on a rock. I mean, I do that all the time. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. How many times a year? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, Steve. I don't think anybody's like talking about. Hey, we need to shut off the generators tomorrow, and just live so off. So, but of then what, what would primitive is, what it would mean in the world of today? What would that look like? It's a good conversation to have. Why don't we? Yeah, have I, why don't we have? <laughs> <laughs> well, it just so happens we have some cameras on, and <laughs> roughly <laughs> twenty-two <laughs> minutes left. Yeah, so let's go. Let's go down that road. Yeah. All right. So how? Okay. So if if let's say primitivism is an end goal, which we still have yet to really define what that is. So what are the steps to getting there? And can we get there without hundreds of thousands and millions of people dying in the process? You see what I'm saying? Well, and for what purpose? Yeah. Just yeah. because? Or? Yeah. So is it... I think the argument is that while, while sedentary lifestyles exist... Sedentary, as in not nomadic. While those exist, governments have it. It, it have a an easy prey, so to speak. That's kind of true. Easier. Well, it is about control, so they are kind of trying to domesticate us. And ultimately, uh, even if you could get to a. Uh, anarchist society temporarily a government's still going to arise because of these these uh, because of technology that's their argument who's they primitivists, primitivists. oh uh, I think I think there's several problems with that one of them I think it the, one of the most glaring is that We don't know. We don't really know that much about uh, prehistoric hunter-gatherer societies. We have guesses, 
based on archaeology and and anthropology of modern nomadic tribes and things like that. But they probably I don't think it's at all certain that government is a direct result from uh, agrarian lifestyles. <clears throat> I think it's entirely possible. Um, I think you have an an ad hoc argument there, though. So s go there. So government is a is from agrarian lifestyle. What does that mean? Where did that start? When the farming? When the right? Okay. When people stopped moving around, right. uh, other people moved in to prey on them. Why? What was their motive? Because. Oh. Because it's easier than, than uh, doing your own thing. Well, so if you're farming, you have excess resources because you have some surplus from farming. Depending on what right. year it is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you might want to just grab those. Mm -hmm. Also, this is where the notion in, of property comes in. In in, mm -hmm. in, yeah. in nomadic tribes, if I were to try to cause trouble with you, uh, as a nomadic tribe, you could just pick up and move somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But as an agrarian society, your plants are in the ground. It's not you can't go anywhere if somebody starts messing with you. <clears throat> so they made compromises with criminals, essentially, that formed into government. They talk to the terrorists. They yeah. Wow. Yeah, that 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 is a theory. Um, me and Steve have talked about this a bit. That it. Sounds pretty legit for a better way to explain it, but we have still have kind of we still have yet to find uh, another source of the story about how that uh, what was it uh, was Jericho it? Jericho yeah Jericho that they essentially the theory is is that the beginning of government was there was a gang that said mm, fuck it we're going to build a fort here and we're just going to tell the locals hey give us some of your extra excess grain here. And we promise that we'll protect you from other people who are going to steal your grain if you just give us a little bit. And so from then on, probably somebody decided a crown look really cool. And, you know, so goes the rest of human history. So they weren't doing it. They weren't taking up all this land and being nice to people like, like the lords of the land. No, or, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that was a myth. You know, essentially, so essentially the, the, the story goes is that they... <clears throat> like I was saying, that they showed up, decided, mm, these people seem fairly... They're originally raiding places all yeah. over the area, and then they decided, hey, why go through the risk of getting hurt ourselves by raiding all these, all these communities when we can sit here, make a deal with them with, to, for part of their grain with, with the understanding that... If you give us part of our grain, we won't kill you, and we'll, and then part of that agreement is also keeping out other raiders because if other raiders come in, obviously, then you lose your, your portion. So so it became a compromise between the peaceful, farmers and the, and the Gang. criminal criminal gangs. Yeah. And thus, man was domesticated. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I guess that. Um, Steve, I'm not, not but I sure. think I think the problem is that is, is drawing the causation uh, the ca causation argument from the correlation of right government arising at the same time as agrarian society, and more than that, that uh, with technology and agrarian. Uh, and modern society necessitates government, and I don't think that that is so either. Because people living in close proximity of each other, having to deal with each other and make. I I think I think it's, um, I think that. Gov that technology can just as easily be used to. Well, not just as easily, but can be easily used to free us as enslave us. So thing, things like Bitcoin, for instance, are freeing us from the 
the government-run banking systems. How is it in um, us? Encryption is keeping us from government um, spies. He's saying those are examples. Oh, but they're not enslaving that, us. That's, okay. That's the right. one side right. of technology that is, is, is empowering, right. individually empowering yeah. per se, as disempowering, right? So. Kind of like somehow we mentioned last, last week is, um, uh, so the difference between iron and steel, right? So at one point they, you know, things were just being made out of iron. And then they learn how to heat up the iron even hotter and return it to steel. It's stronger. Well, what can you do with iron versus steel? Well, with steel, you can make a stronger sword to defend yourself with, but you can also make some stronger shackles to enslave somebody with. So, yeah, that's the thing, is that there, there, any technology that comes along, there is the possibility to do wonderful things with it and horrible things with it. Uh, well, more than that, I think there's examples, such as the Icelandic Commonwealth period, of agrarian society that was largely free, Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think the argument falls apart there when you're talking about, uh, be, because the argument isn't so much, um, is not uh, uh, whether we should use technology or not. The argument is really, from what I see, is... Do we need to get rid of technology to get rid of control mechanisms, government mechanisms? And I don't think we need, I I don't think think that that's necessary. I think that's what's going to allow us to get rid of government is the technology. Because it's just, it's going to allow us to communicate with fellow, with people differently than we've ever been able to before. I I think the behaviorists, excuse me, the... Some primitivists, anyway, would probably uh, argue for primitivism from a behavioral perspective as well. And that is to <coughs> say that uh, you could argue that humans were uh, better to their children, uh, worked together better as in uh, primitive um, hunter-gatherer societies. And there's only... Uh, I think one or two modern uh, hunter-gatherer societies. There are some that are supposedly, I think there's only like literally one or two legitimate uh, models to study. And then there's one, I think, off the coast of India that they won't let any outsiders on. Yeah. Like they, oh, yeah like literally, that, they yeah. don't even know yeah. what's going on on the right. island because they can't even get yeah. on the island, right? So Got to give respect to those guys. They it literally, is. That's get, awesome. a, they literally get a bow and arrow yeah. and shoot it at the yeah. helicopters yeah. when they fly by. And you're like, right. Those guys, they're keeping yeah. it real. <laughs> I think there's a, an argument as far as human behavior goes that it's attached to the primitivists. Uh, and I'm not conversant in it. I'm not uh, a proponent of primitivism, per se. So, anyway. They also argue uh, uh, health benefits. Right, right. Um, yeah, that, and and some of them... Some of them of yeah. Well, some, they do make some good points, but I think... Where they go too far is when they try to claim that disease and things like that didn't exist prior to agrarian society. <coughs> yeah, no, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it's short of the long of it, no, that's bullshit. Of course there was a disease before the, there was agriculture. The amount of yeah. leisure to work is incredible. Like They have a, a, an incredible I've amount of that. leisure mm-hmm. time in their life uh, where now the bulk of our life is Working. laboring, yeah. right? Whether it's at a desk or in the field. It's oh, but there still was still labor. a lot. I mean, you, the, in order to get water and food, that, those were laborious tasks. Yeah, but tasks the Chumash, too. for instance, right here in s- yeah. southern somewhere. Uh, <laughs> 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 no. Undisclosed location yeah. may or may somewhere. not be yeah. in the I west region there, yeah. of North America. Not, yeah, quite, North America. You know, yeah. But basically, uh, above ground or below. Yeah. Right. Two yeah. weeks' time is all it took to harvest all the food each individual would eat in a year, two weeks' time, right? So Harvest it, but then you have to do something with it. You have to then... Sure, but it still is like an incredibly low amount of time as compared to now. And that was like, uh, if I remember correctly, it was something like 200 pounds of acorns a year Mm -hmm. per individual, Mm -hmm. and they would all do their own harvesting, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, just going around and picking them up from the, the tree spit out, so... 
Um, and that's all that oh. we'd eat is acorn? No, acorn? that's not the only thing. It's okay. the bulk of their diet. The bulk of, really? Yeah. Acorn, mm-hmm. protein, protein mm-hmm. essential. If you don't have protein, you die. So, right. yeah. Hmm. Uh, but the thing is, is that you're also not getting um, other essential things to your diet that you need. Um, well, they would eat others. They had like five staples, I think. And there's been an analysis of their diet, mm-hmm. the primitive diet of that particular uh, Indians in this region, and they found it to be incredibly, you know, nourishing mm-hmm. and complete diet. How do we know that just... Because you could, those, the things they ate still exist, and you can do a nutritional analysis of, the, of those staples. Of things in the Wait, local environment. Wait, how did environment they exist? That, uh, Acorns still exist. <laughs> I got it. Miners Acorns li- still miners, a thing. It's like miners, <laughs> lettuce, amaranth, acorns. Uh, there's a few Were others. Were they found on the sites or something of their How do they know what they eat? There's, of their uh, compounds? Those, right. those Indian tribes still exist, right? Oh, so, oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Right, okay. so, yeah. I mean, they may, so, not, they may have a, 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 a fully embraced the standard American diet, sad diet, right? But there's still the verbal tradition that's been handed mm-hmm. down, right? That still is present. So this may like narrow it down to like a radius of 50 miles. But um, is uh, <laughs> so you're talking about like the the Luis Anio too, which is yeah. like local yeah. around here. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's um, Chrissy to, to answer your question of like, well, how is it that they know what they are eating? Well, you could sit there and go, like, okay, what are the plants that are native to this area? Uh, that were here 150 years ago to the best of our knowledge. Well, so you get your acorns, you get your uh, yep. your mule plants. deer. There's your, plants. Yeah, your different yeah. plants and Vegetables. whatnot. You know, yeah. So you're going to figure out what it is that people can live off of because people will consume it if they find out they're doing better. If you do not have a good source of protein and the whole tribe is tired all the time, and you find some acorns that all of a sudden, hey, everybody's waking up, and they're feeling a lot better, they're not feeling so lethargic, and kind of not so, like, you know, blotchy, <laughs> they're, uh, they're, people are going to continue to eat acorns. And so that's kind of, like, how you figure that out, is, like, okay, well, some people need certain basic things, vitamin C, protein, um, probably a source of carbohydrates, sugar at one point or another. So, you know, if you, if you can find that somewhere along the line in the local flora, you can figure out that's probably what somebody was eating because you need certain basic things. Uh, you know, there, you, know you, you take a multivitamin and it'll say like, all right, so this, you know, this is everything that's in the multivitamin. Okay. Do you need all of those? No. If you want to live past 45, yes. So, what, uh, what, <laughs> you know, like so that, did they live... Very long. And do we know that? How long do um, those? We don't necessarily. Okay, so there, there is. Um, there's guesses. It, yeah, it, there's guesses. Can, can I just one second? Yeah, go ahead. So that's uh, relevant to station in life. So, mm-hmm. for instance, we can look at uh, philosophers from the days of the Greeks. And what do we see? We see very long lives, right? Yeah, look to the the mines, you know, where people are in the mines, they got short lives, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, lifespan is more uh, indicative of station. So they didn't really care. So there was a, a high death rate at birth, right? which would skew the numbers low. And there's also, like, as recently as Calvin Coolidge's son is an example. So 1920s. Uh, his son at like teenage years died from a broken ankle because he got thrown from a horse so trauma management wasn't good then right so mm-hmm. you died at it young ages from, good, from trauma right, right. but if you're of station you and your children probably didn't necessarily have the odds of, of dying at a younger age as the poor and uh, those who had to man the mines or whatever yeah, if so my point is, yeah, right, the medicine man probably lived to be, the village medicine man probably lived to be an old man, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm just right. guessing, right? But uh, if you're out there having to chase down buffalo with the rest of them, maybe you didn't live so long. Yeah, like when they, they found uh, skeletons of uh, your, uh, your Neanderthal man, your, your, your Cro-Magnon, um, they're... They don't like to use Cro-Magnon anymore. There's a word for it. It's not Cro-Magnon. You know, is anybody Does like... That offend Cro-Magnon? No, no. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not that it offends Cro-Magnon. There's like... Astrolopithecus? There, no, no, that's way, way, way earlier. Um, 
Cro-Magnon, there's, there's like another... Homo erectus. Term. No, that's the one before. There's like something else before... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's just say Cro-Magnon and Anathol, because that's what I grew up with. So, um... <laughs> You have, uh, you know, these, um, you know, they're finding, like, skeletons of Denison. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Denison. Deer's delicious. No, um, so you're finding skeletons. <laughs> they're, they're finding skeletons of them, and, uh, you know, and these, you know, and they're, you know, they very seldom live to be past 40 or 45. And you sit there and go, well, why is that? Well, because uh, a lot of times in, well, in Europe, to find a good source of protein, they're having to kill a lot of animals. Well, what's a lot of animals? A lot of animals is your, is your boar, your uh, deer, which were fairly large at the time. You know, this isn't just your normal deer. These are, you know, bigger animals. Well, so if you're hunting, you know, one of them, and one of them decides to say, you threw a spear at me, go fuck yourself, and charges at you, right, and hits you, and you fall down a bad, nice, croggy, like, you know, hillside, you might just break your hip. And you might just break your hip, it's not going to heal right, and you're not walking right, you're not hunting anymore. Guess who's getting the meat first? The guys who are hunting. This is really similar to how uh, the pack of coyotes work, you know? I mean, uh, the guys who kill the damn thing, guess what? You guys get to eat first because you were good at it. So the, the poor bastard who broke his hip trying to kill it, sorry, Charlie, uh, you're only going to have so much, and he's probably not going to live as long as the rest of them. So... There's there's that there's that really bad side of the, of that that primitivist sort of a thing. That they don't says, care that has about to be their brethren. How it is, right. Yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. No, it doesn't have to be that way. But I there is so but there are consequences to saying let's get rid of all technology whatsoever. Your consequences are oh you got hurt hurting you got hurt trying to take out a boar. Oh sorry. Uh, you didn't heal right. Oh, uh, why? Well, we couldn't really make a very good splint with, you know, some twine and, and pieces of bark. Sorry, you know, like there's, there, uh, there. So do we have to abandon that? Why, why say, do we, what's the good part of going back to primitivism? Primitivism, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we've been discussing so far. Well, but like, not really. Kind I mean, of. I mean no, we're not getting really, there. But, you know, <laughs> Because going back means we already have technology, guys. We already have this stuff that mm -hmm. we really like, okay? What's the good one? So what? your argument is like the genie in the bottle? Like the genie's already been let it's out of the bottle? It's already been let out, right. What, but right, why, why would we... I mean, yes, there are some... To me, there's spiritual reasons why we want to get out of the rat race and, and be addicted to all this technology. There's There's... Spiritual reasons to want to be addicted to all this no no thing? no to get out of it to mm -hmm. not to to get away from it to okay. get away to get closer to nature get closer to the things that are um, just basic to life but I mean can we can we do it can it, is it something we can do our, our brains have been essentially the same for a hundred thousand years but yet in the past hundred fifty years we've been confronted with like shit that don't make any sense to our brains essentially we just deal with it because that's what we're born into. You know what I mean? Like, I guess, like, it's... I'm Except not for we're not the same as we were 100,000 years ago. Pretty much. Our brains are essentially the same characteristics. As a matter of fact, our brains and our guts are some of the, m the most fast... Or some of the fast fastest the evolving parts of human beings. I can see that being... Right, but they sure as hell weren't having to, like, click out of ads on Google. Like, every... You know what I mean? Like, we, we're, we're confronted with imagery that uh, is telling us, buy this shit. That yeah. you don't really need, You're on it, right? yeah. you know. It's so th that's uh, yeah. what I'm saying is, is that I I don't think I don't want to have to shave my beard off with an obsidian knife. I don't want to do that. But the problem with modern day technology is, buy this shit, buy this shit. Oh, hey, you want to download a game for free? Well, guess what? You get ads that pop up every 10 seconds. Oh, uh, yeah. You want to download this other game for five bucks? I'm like, fuck you. No, I don't want to download this. Oh, There's an argument to that, right? Like, so you, you, our, our minds haven't even evolved to the point where we can deal with bodies of supposed near perfection being flashed in front of our face all the time, right? You know, we, weren't, we, we didn't evolve with that, right? So it's like... Anyway, the, 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 well, the distractions of modern technology is put in front of us. Well, th well that, that, that's a good point, and I mean, I don't want to, like, get way too... 
too far on to The question to is, it. how are we going to get our robots yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> <laughs> damn it, that transition went like a flood of bricks on the ground. Uh, but, uh, well, damn it, no, that's a really good topic, though, is, is, is about how it is that we're confronted about sexuality. That's a future show. But, um, so, yeah, so... In a, in a primitive society, is there a possibility for robot sex? How could there be? Uh, well, robots yeah, are see, not no, primitive. No, 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 well, well, wait, but so... But alien could, robot? Could you have, what? Could you have Why do we have to get up robots? robot sex? <laughs> How do we get yeah, to robot right. sex? I'm not really How sure. How can we be primitivists but and still have our robot sex? Robot sex. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems that we end up on robot sex a whole lot. How is that? Uh, I don't know. know. Uh, what, what it's do something we're going to have to talk about another time, though. Another show. Damn. All right, well. All right, well... See you guys next week. Peace out. Next week.